Hi, my name is P3, working at Hyundai Motor Company. In this talk, I'm going to introduce Guider, Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer, and explain how to trace our Linux system using it. This is a summary for my talk. First, talking about performance analysis and optimization. Next, introducing Guider and its useful features. Next, explaining how to trace our Linux system using Guider. Finally, showing demo how to use Guider. Okay, let's talk about performance factors. First of all, the major performance factor is CPU. There are many reasons to make your system slow, such like CPU intensive job, frequent context switching, busy weight task, and so on. If your system is slowing down, the first thing to do is watching total CPU usage and which tasks are using CPU cores. Memory is also frequent, important. Uh, frequent memory allocation and the allocation jobs will consume CPU more than expected. An inefficient allocation and missing the allocation, such like leaks, can cause the out of memory. The system will be uh, slow seriously. In worst case, it will restart finally. To free up memory, Linux kernel tried to flush file caches, swap pages out, it called reclaim. Once reclaim start, the system will slowly start to slow down. Next one is IO. Generally, uh, block device is the slowest in our system. So optimization such like caching, preloading, compression, uh, workload tuning is required. Especially unnecessary IO operations should be removed and contiguous operations uh, must be merged. Last one is for communications. Lock, it's very important to prevent data corruption uh, shared between multiple tasks but it can have a huge impact on performance. Excessive lock contention increases CPU usage and also response time. Moreover, performance can be worse depending on lock attributes such like priority inheritance protocol, busy weight, wake up storm, and Vutex. IPC. In modern system, all services generate remote procedure core using system bus, such like dbus, to operate in complex relationship with each other. But this RPC may cause system overhead, such like context switching, serialization, memory copy. In particular, broadcasting calls greatly increases the system load and response time. Next one is IRQ. Interrupt, especially software interrupts called bottom half can affect system response time. Uh, network, network drivers are typical. So it has many performance tuning options between CPU uses and response time. It's about trade-off. In addition to these factors I described, there are many other performance factors. Most importantly, we need to be able to recognize each performance factor and measure its actual impact. Yes, we need to think about how to measure them. 
The narrowing down approach is very effective for root cause analysis when debugging and profiling system. From the system level to the instruction level, the following four steps are repeated at various levels until the root cause is found. Classifying problem, measuring factors, modifying arguments, verifying result. And finally, we should be able to pinpoint the root cause of the performance problem to go home. But it's very time consuming job and sometimes it seems to have no end in sight. So how can we do this easily? Logging and using tools are the most effective way to analyze performance. Logging is very useful for recording specific information, but understanding log requires domain-specific knowledge, so system-level engineers or new members are difficult to understand them usually. In addition, adding new logs require source code and toolchain for rebuild. It's very boring and time consuming. It's also difficult to record and analyze too many logs because of the, the limitation for memory and our time. So we prefer to use performance tools it's very comfortable and effective to analyze performance at system level. Some nice tools doesn't even require rebuilding target program, installing itself with dependent packages, restarting target task. But sometimes too many tools confuse us. Determining the right tool from a variety of performance issues is not easy. So I introduced Guider Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer. It can monitor, profile, trace, visualize various performance factors. Monitoring features provide continuous performance stats every interval in real time. Profiling features provide a static, st statistic overview of collected data during a specific interval. Tracing features provide the specific data on the execution of the task in the form of logs. Guider is a kind of CRI tool, so it offers a lot of features by the combination of comments and options. But in this tool, I'll try to explain only some useful features and tracing features about it because of time limitation. It's open source program and written in Python. It doesn't require installation, but PIP and OE, Yocto, Embed, Yocto Recipe, also supported for your convenience actually just executing a uh, guider.py file is enough. Guider never use external binaries such like executable programs, libraries, Python packages, except for Matplot library for some kind of visualization features. Most of guider features are implemented directly using standard library such like libc. That's the reason why guider doesn't require rebuild, install, configuration. In addition, it can be applied with only one megabyte of storage space. Uh, these characteristics are very attractive in embedded systems. All features of Guider are supported in Linux and Android, but it also provides some limited features on macOS and Windows. Okay. From now, let me introduce some curing features of Guider. 
first one is monitoring system resources in real time. This feature works by periodically updating stats for system resource and events. System resource is about CPU, memory, swap, block, network, storage. As shown in the picture in the first part, system resource information is shown on the top line such as the number of core, RAM, swap. And additional system information such as context switching, interrupt, running task, memory zone, and performance stats using PMU are also printed. In the second part, important system level resources and events are printed. System states such as CPU uses, available memory, swap uses, memory reclaim, block IO, network IO are most precious information for performance analysis. In addition, per core usages are also printed, although not shown in the picture. Governor, clock, temperature for each core can be shown together using specific options. In the third part, storage information about busy workload available space is shown for each device. Heavy storage workload can cause serious performance degradation. That's the reason why we check those stats. In the upper part of the picture, Network information about inbound and outbound is shown for each device. In the lower part of the picture, not only system resources, but also task resources are shown with their attributes in real time. Uh, it's a little bit similar to Linux top command. Use this for CPU, virtual, physical, shared memory, swap, um, block IO and memory details are uh, printed well. The shown tasks are sorted by CPU uses if by default, but you can change the sort order using a specific option. The task filter is also available to show only specific tasks. All or specific, specific function calls are monitored for a specific task in real time. In addition, stats about function calls are also printed such as average, minimum, maximum time. At this picture, all function calls are shown with backtrace. That usage is, is about is not about CPU, it's the proportion for the total function calls. So this feature is useful when finding frequent calls or measuring specific function call count, including backtrace. Of course, there is another function monitoring feature to measure CPU intensive function calls by sampling techniques. The task filter and function filter are also supported. All systems, including backtrace, are also monitored for specific tasks in real time. In addition, Cisco states are also shown, such as elapsed time, error return together. This feature is very useful when finding Cisco that take a long time, measuring specific Cisco count, checking Cisco error returns. The task filter and Cisco filter are also supported. All open files, sockets, pipes are monitored for each process in real time. Files and printed uh, red position and open flag 
this P and UT sockets are printed with binding and connection status. Unix domain sockets are also printed with the file paths like this. This kind of information is very precious when debugging issues or performance tracing. The process filter and the file filter are also available. By using the file filter, monitoring all processes that open specific files or binded specific sockets is possible. Previous monitoring features are for checking current status, but if some, someone wants to see a summary of system changes for a long time, the profiling features can be good solution. As shown in the picture, in the top table, changes for system resources and events are printed in, uh, for each interval. CPU uses available memory, block IO, swap uses, memory reclaim size, running task, network uses are summarized in each line for each interval. Because of screen length limitation, some fields were truncated. In the middle table, changes for storage uses are displayed with total summary. There was no storage operation in the profiling time. Busy workload size available space are summarized for each interval for each device. In the bottom table, changes for network uses are printed with total summary in the red box. Workload for inbound and outbound is summarized for each time interval for each device. Similar form. Next profiling features are for tasks. In the first table, changes for per process CPU uses are shown with task attributes and total summary for each interval. Total summary information in the red box represents CPU uses such as minimum, average, maximum, and total for each task and full system. In the second table, changes for per process virtual memory uses are also printed with task attributes and total summary for each interval. The overall format is similar to the CPU table above. Although not shown in this picture, various types of tables are reported together, such like scheduling delay, physical memory, block IO, C group uses. By using these features, measuring and comparing resource uses are possible for various test cases. Text-based analysis is specific, but less readable. That's why Guider provides visualization features in SVG format. Using the SVG format out in your web browser, it provides an easy to view and responsive interface. First visualization feature is about resource graph. As shown in the picture, the top box shows graphs of CPU uses for processes. The box on the right side is the label list for the CPU graphs. The middle box shows graphs of block and network IO for the whole system. The bottom box shows graphs of memory for the whole system. Of course, process graphs about block, network, memory resources are also available. In addition, fi uh, filter option for all of them is also supported. As you can see, 
this visualization feature makes it easy to understand big data collected for a long time. And it also helps to understand the trends in resource uses for a long time. This is also good for communication with uh, other people. Next visualization feature is about scheduling. The scheduling data is very large and very difficult to analyze one by one. Therefore, as shown in the picture, uh, scheduling data such as time slice, preemption, and blocking should be visualized prior to detailed analysis. Using the SVG format output in your web browser, you can view details for time slices. It's not, uh, it's, it's very difficult, it's very effective, yeah, effective for analyzing multi-threaded programs, interactive services, the right tasks, co-utilization. In addition, this feature also allows for scheduling events as well as other custom events having timestamps for start and end. Last visualization feature is about call stacks. Analyzing only last called functions without whole call stack is difficult because standard functions such like read, write can be called by any other functions. Above all, in most cases, last called functions won't cause all the problem. The problem is like with some other functions that called those last functions. Therefore, to analyze performance problems in function level, we need to be able to see the whole including each call stack. In this case, this frame graph feature is very useful to analyze call stack based profiling result for CPU uses, blocking status, memory leak, syscall trigger, function call. As shown in the picture, last functions at the bottom of each task each stack are uh, various, so we need to analyze upper functions that contains them. I guess modifying those functions will improve your application or service performance actually. Opening the SBG format output in your web browser, uh, highlighting, zooming, searching specific functions or stacks are also available using mouse and keyboard. Okay, so far I have introduced some useful features of Guider. From now on, I would like to explain tracing features. Because of time limitation, I'm going to explain only function tracing signal tracing, IO tracing. The target of function tracing is divided into three kinds of thing. First, native calls such as C, Rust, and Go. Second, Python calls using interpreter. Last, system calls. The signal tracing is about signals delivered to the target. IO tracing is about IO operations at various levels, such like device, task, file. Tracing target is divided into program and task. Program is a binary not yet executed from storage, so guider can execute the target program at which point the tracing begins from loader. Task is running, uh, task is a running thread. Guider does not require restart of the running task for tracing. 
Instead, it attached to the running task directory. Tracing commands are various. If you want to see detailed commands and options, please refer to guide or help. Okay, the first tracing feature is for native functions such as C, C++, Rust, Go. Native function tracing is started by btrace command. The command is implemented using a breakpoint called trap. Breakpoints for all symbol addresses from ERF and dwarf sections are injected to the target task's virtual memory by Guider itself using Ptrace. So Guider can detect events for function call and function return from the target task by Ptrace. Guider can even read and manipulate registers and memory for the target task when function events occur, function call or return. As shown in the picture, call stacks are shown with various steps for Go program in real time. Arguments and binary name for each function are also printed together in a line. The G option in the command line is task filter. That means all tasks have name including Go will be targets for function tracing. The H option means printing backtrace. If there was no H option in the command line, just all function calls are printed without depths. Function filter is also available with the C option to trace only specific functions. The C option supports specific characteristic characters such like asterisk for inclusion or circumflex for exclusion. Using the H option, all backtrace are also printed with the target function is called every time. As I already mentioned, Guider can read and manipulate registers and memory for the target task at the time of each event, function call or return. In addition, various features such like task control, injection for Python code, and external binary, remote call are also available using call command. As shown in the picture on the right side, Many call commands are supported to handle specific function call events. Let me explain some call commands. Execute, execute external command when function called. This one is filter. Print context if only specific conditions are met. Get arc, print specific argument value. Set arc, manipulate specific argument value, get return, print return value and elapse the time when function returned. PY file, execute specific Python script remotely. Read man, print specific memory value. Write man, manipulate system memory value. Sleep. Wait for specific seconds, syscall, call specific syscall remotely, user call, call specific user level call remotely. These kind of call commands are very useful when analyzing more deeply. This is about how to use call commands. Call commands are appended to the function filter with vertical bar in the C option. The command line at the picture means first start, start tracing uh, only write function from yes ABC command. 
as you know, yes, it's just a little comment that print argument value infinitely. So yes, ABCD comment will print ABCD string repeatedly. And print function is implemented internally by the right function in libc. Okay. Next, when the right function is called, print the memory value pointed to by the first argument with backtrace. Argument number starts from zeroth in guider. Therefore, function argument for the right function is specific memory address that points to the value ABCD to be written. Yeah. I guess the yes command is implemented using preferred rights because multiple ABCD strings are written at once by the right call. Okay, next iteration feature is about Python call. Python, Python function tracing is started by ptrace command, the py trace command. The command will print all Python method calls. As shown in the picture, Python call stacks are printed in real time at various depths depending on the stack frame, file pass and line number for the each function are also printed together. The target was IO top program that written in Python and prints IO uses in real time. In background, call comments used in various native function tracing are also available for this feature. Next tracing feature is for syscall. Syscall tracing is started by strace command similar to original Linux command. The command will print all these calls and their arguments converted into an easy to understand format. As shown in the picture, syscalls are printed with backtrace, return value, elapsed time in real time. Call commands used in previous native function tracing are also available for this feature. Next tracing feature is for signal. Signal tracing is started by sigtrace command. The command will print all received signals for the target task. In addition, the cause of the signal generation and the sender can be also printed when receiving segment fault trend signals. As shown in the picture, received signals are printed for target threads in real time, and those threads were terminated because of segmentation fault caused by long memory access. Backtrace option and signal filter option are also available for this feature. Using backtrace, you can analyze which function is being executed when the target task receives signals. This feature is useful when monitoring multiple tasks to analyze abnormal terminations such as segmentation fault. Last, last tracing feature in this talk is for IO. IO tracing means analyzing which task performed which operations on which files on which devices and what size. And it's not only for specific tasks, but also all tasks, whole system. So it must be possible to correct all system IO events, including various metadata such like task, device, inode, workload information. The IO tracing consists of three steps. First, recording all system IO events. Second, processing recorded data, in, including conversion. Last, summarizing and reporting result. 
In the command line, IO rec command is for recording system IO events into a specific file. Report command is for processing data and reporting to a specific output file. As shown in the picture, first report information is about task workload. In the red box on the right side of the picture, block workloads are shown with elapsed time for read and write size in megabyte, operation count field for each task. Not only workload, but also a lot of time is printed. It's very useful to analyze delay caused by IO system widely. The cached IO is excluded in those states because this is the actual block operation so some operations using page caches are not measurable. Next, report information in IO tracing is about uh, device workload by size. In the red box of the picture, it shows the workload of each device for the read operation of all tasks and the proportion about sequential operation. Most read operations uh, consist of 4K workload. In the, uh, in the blue box on the picture, about 55% of operations were sequential. In other words, about 43% of operations were random, random IO. This information is useful when optimizing device workload including kernel reader ahead. Of course, not only total workload, but also per task workload is also shown at the bottom of the picture. Next the report information in IO tracing is about file workload. In the red box of the picture, it shows the workload of each file for the write operation of all tasks. Most write operations, about 100 megabytes, are performed into the test file. Actually, it's all about the guider thread using IO test command. This information is useful when tracing or analyzing task workload or file workload. Yeah, it's very nice. Next report information in IO tracing is about file operations. Uh, as shown in the picture, all read file operations are displayed, including time, task, offset, size, and pass. Actually, it's about uh, page, uh, page fault operation. So the total file size is also appended into the, the end of pass in each line. It's detailed information, but analyzing is a little bit difficult. So, okay, let me show demo finally. Okay, first of all, uh, let's install either using PIP. Then uh, check version. Okay, it's installed successfully. And check comments using help command. Like this. There are many comments supported by Guider. Yeah. If you use H option with any command, like this, options and examples for each comment will be shown like this. Yeah, this is examples.
sometimes I refer to that. <laughs> Next, uh, let's execute yes program. Yeah, it just print input string repeatedly. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Then execute it in background with redirection to um, null device. And let's monitor system resources with the top command. Yes, process is using CPU much and it's running on uh, this core now. And there are many other states as shown like this in real time. But this is in real time. So let's profile system and tasks for 10 seconds using this comment. Let's start. Okay, finish it. The report is saved into guider.out file. So open the alpha file using VI. Yeah, there is system information on the top of the file. General information, resource uses, like this. And finally, um, system resource uses in each interval for 10 seconds are shown CPU usages, uh, available memory, block IO, swap, network IO, and CPU usages for whole system and specific processes, including YES, is shown like this. Yeah, this is summarized states, uh, each interval states. Next, let's, uh, in addition, virtual memory and physical memory, memory details are shown like this. Okay, then this is about detailed states for each interval. Okay, let's uh, monitor this course with course text. Yeah, only write to this course are being used. And this is the user level course tag calling the right to this call. This is real time stats. And next, let's monitor functions using CPU using by sampling techniques. Okay. It looks similar to previous syscall course tag. Write function is, called, is being called in libc using this backtrace. Okay, let's trace syscalls with arguments and course tags. Okay. 
like this. Uh, this is right this course and its arguments, return value. Yeah, this is back trace and return value and elapsed time for each right crawl. Okay. So next, trace functions with arguments and course text. This is right. This is right function call and cost text with memory value pointed by first argument for the right function. This is the address and the value is shown like this. Okay. So with the memory value pointed by first argument for the right function, this is the address, and the value is shown like this. Okay, next feature is um, visualization. This is performance graph showing system resource uses of our CPU, memory, IO. This part shows CPU uses for whole system and processes. This is about total CPU and CPU usage for other processes. Um, okay. This is levels for each graph. This part is about IO, but there is no graph because profiling options were not enough. And this part shows memory uses for whole system like this. Next one is timeline chart showing scheduling time slices for all tasks. Each number shown on the left is the CPU core number and time slices of running tasks in each core are also shown. If you move the mouse pointer over a specific time slice, information about task, event, and time is printed. Some time slices are there here. Johnny. Yeah, we can check like this. And there are, are some time slices. Your local, but it's difficult to create. Right. 
Last one is frame graph for course text. If you create a specific function box, yeah, zoom in is performed like this. Zoom out again. Zoom in. And searching is also supported with regular expression. Yeah, like this. So far, I have explained some kind of useful features, including tracing of guider. Uh, there are more useful features besides the one I described, but I couldn't explain all of them because of time limitation. So for specific details, please refer to the readme file in guider repo. And if you have any questions, please contact me using email or GitHub. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.